Today is the 8th of March, which is International Women's Day. So many women of the North East have been shaping our world for hundreds of years, and without them, things wouldn't be the same. So here are 10 women of the North East that have shaped society for the better. The heroic lighthouse keeper's daughter, Grace Darlin, is famed for rescuing crew members from the shipwrecked Forshire in 1838 near the Farne Islands. Grace, who was then 22, spotted the ship which had run aground on rocks in the stormy seas. And when she and her father William saw survivors on the reef, they set off in the family cobble boat to help. They rescued nine people, four crewmen and five passengers. The life of suffragette Emily Davison is best known for its violent end in 1913, when she stepped in front of the King's Horse at the Epsom Derby, dying four days later. The famous women's activist who hailed from Morbeth dedicated herself to the suffragette movement in 1908. In 1913, she ran onto the race course at Epsom during the Derby. She was knocked over by the King's Horse and died from her injuries. She might not have changed the world on an international stage, but the work of this remarkable grandmother changed the lives of thousands of people and continues to do so. Alison Kerr founded the People's Kitchen in Bath Lane in Newcastle to give food and hope to those sleeping rough on the streets of the city. The grandmother who lived in Heaton Road in Heaton set up the project at the age of 76 in 1985 when she heard about a man who died while sleeping in freezing weather in Lees's Park. After a year, Alison had a team of 40 volunteers and together they opened the first people's kitchen to support the homeless by offering food, clothes and a warm fire to anyone who needed it. The charity has been providing friendship and food to anyone who needs support ever since, remaining true to Alison's principles. For her commitment to helping those in need, Alison received an honorary degree from Newcastle University in 1997. Born and raised in Sunderland, journalist Kate Aidy became one of the best known faces on television as chief news correspondent for the BBC, during which time she became well known for reporting from war zones around the world. She covered a raft of major world events, including the American bombing of Tripoli in 1986, the Lockerbie bombing in 1988, and following her promotion a chief news correspondent in 1989, the Tiananmen Square protests. She took up significant reporting positions in the First Gulf War, in Yugoslavia, the genocide in Rwanda and the war in Sierra Leone. The Countess of Lovelace, better known as Ada Lovelace, was the daughter of Lord Byron and his wife Anne Isabella Milbank of Seam Hall. Little Ada's talents were spotted at an early age by tutors who during lessons spotted her aptitude for maths and science. She grew up to become a mathematician, writer and computer pioneer, working with an engineer Charles Babbage on his invention of a fully automated calculating machine. She even wrote the first ever published computer programme. She envisaged a machine that could process musical notes, letters and images, anticipating what we know as computers by over a hundred years. The real life exploits of Ida Cook and her sister Louise in saving 29 Jewish escapees from Nazi Germany in the three years leading to the Second World War could have matched the plot of any novel. Born in Sunderland and raised in Northumberland, the two sisters smuggled out the valuables of Jews anxious to find refuge in Britain, who were not allowed to take any wealth from the Nazi state, but needed to be able to satisfy the financial requirements to enter the UK. The refugees who couldn't leave Germany with their money or possessions could convert cash into valuables such as jewellery, gems and fur, which the sisters would carry out. Their efforts were recognised when they were awarded the status of Righteous Among the Nations by Israel, along with figures like Oscar Schindler, who helped save the lives of 1,200 Jews during the Holocaust, employing them in factories in occupied Poland. Catherine Cookson's gritty novels depicting life in the early 20th century South Tyneside reflected her humble origins and captivated millions when they were serialised on television. 
Dame Catherine was born illegitimate in a two-bedroom house in Tyne Dock, South Shields, on the 20th of June 1906, and was raised by her grandparents. The best-selling and widely loved author passed away in 1998, just nine days short of her 92nd birthday at her Jesmond home. Born in 1895, Rachel Parsons was a pioneering female engineer who paved the way for women working in sciences. When the First World War broke out, she replaced her brother as a director on the board of their father's Parsons Marine Steam Turbine Company in Wall's End. During that time, she oversaw the recruitment and training of women to replace the men who had left to join the forces. She also became a leading member of the National Council of Women and campaigned equal access to technical schools and colleges for all, regardless of their gender. Fighting to help others, the male-dominated profession, at the age of 34, she co-founded the Women's Engineering Society. Former MP Mo Morlam was elected to represent Redcar in 1987 and was Secretary of State for Northern Ireland from 1997 to 1999, during which time she led talks that resulted in the Good Friday Agreement in 1998. Before that, she worked as a politics lecturer at Newcastle University, which awarded her an honorary doctorate of civil law in 1998. Moore, who died in 2005, was honoured with a plaque on the Newcastle and Gateshead Walk of Fame. Who else do you think is an inspiring woman from the North East? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to be alerted to any upcoming new videos.